All right, guys, we're back. And today we're starting off at the uh, at our so-so headquarters. I hate to call this a headquarters, but shall we call it Taylor the headquarters? Or? So we got a new system. I I just updated. I think Angie is actually coming back with the other computer, but we finally we had a slow computer here, so we were. Uh, we are having issues, so we spent here. I was I was here till midnight last night. You know that. that late. Yeah. I was here till that late. Um, I got up at eight. I did an hour of cardio this morning. But I mean, it's like what thirty minute drive home. Yeah, but I mean, I I went home and I ate. I went to bed about one, and then uh, this week's busy because it's a short week. So I had to this weekend to promote the the Jay Cutler Virginia show and. Where this thing started off, it was a Maryland event, and now we've moved it over to Richmond. So every August, usually the second week of August, we have the Jay Cutler Virginia, which we have we have 100 people um, with crossovers. It's like going to be close to 200, which is good. Um, I'm actually leaving on early, so I'm leaving on Thursday because I wanted to be there for check-ins on Friday, and it's really hard to get to Virginia from Vegas uh, in that amount of time. I'd have to leave super early and I would get there just as the meeting was happening. So I'm actually going to go in a day early, get my training in on, on Friday and then training, and then no event is on Saturday, which is, it's going to run in a different order than normal where we run the morning show. Like we will run all the women together and then we're going to run all the men and then the show's over by like four or five o'clock. So it's actually, <clears throat> um, pretty quick event. I think four o'clock or something like that, five o'clock. And, uh, you know, that's how we're running it. So getting a few things done now. Angie's on her way down. I have to do a couple of things here, and we're going to head to the gym. I'm going to eat a meal. And I, I wanted to get you guys uh, in a little bit. I've been cleaning up. We're on a mission to kind of get things in order. We have all our drinks here. And, you know, Celsius takes care of our podcast, so we have our coolers here. Of course, our built coolers. We get our built drinks in here. A couple other things we keep in there, but I'm gonna move these these over. I'm trying to get this thing a little organized. This is kind of a mess. We just got back from the weekend from the expo. So right now I'm still unpacking bags and every weekend I go to events, I bring memorabilia merch. I mean, this is really what this this warehouse is kind of for. I just released these hoodies. These will be part of the the collection for the fall and, and winter time. You know, I'm going to start bringing more heavier stuff in. Uh, we had a whole pallet of Celsius here. Of course, it's been chopping down a little bit. Bringing back a lot of the gym bags. You know, I do sign all these. So it's cool. I got a lot of extra stuff laying around, but it's kind of a mess. But that's how we function. A lot of old furniture and stuff. I'm going to get rid of all that. You guys remember this one too. Remember this bad boy. Oh, <laughs> I'm actually going to throw this out. We don't need this anymore. This was our, what skit was this, J-Mac? Uh, 50 Shades Away. 50 Shades Away. I'm waiting on these 8 by 10 so I had a huge 50% sale, and I was doing 50% uh, off this picture, and uh, we sold out, so I got a shipment coming today, and uh, we'll get it all sorted out. But until then... I'm going to start moving all these these drinks over, so bear with me guys. And we'll get uh we'll get some food down and then we'll get to uh get to the gym. You wanna see a funny picture, dude? So this is me doing concrete with my family, my dad, my brother Keith, me. And my brother Bob. How old were you there? I was, uh, I think I was 12. 12? Yeah. But those are my brothers and my father. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Do you have the original somewhere? No, nah, I, I just, someone, I think my brother has it somewhere, but I wanted to, fr I wanted to get it and frame it, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the memories. I started working at 11, doing the concrete. And it's kind of crazy. I mean, that's definitely where 
I got my work ethic. I never thought I would. Uh, I think you got your like your, your foundation like muscle wise from doing like manual labor at a young age. I did for sure. I did for sure because uh, otherwise I don't think I would have been incentivized to. I mean, I had a good physique, and everyone kept saying to me, "Man, you look so good. You should work out." You know. And I was like, ah. You know, I, I, I don't know. And then I heard it so much, I was like, man, what happens if I actually started training? You know, what, what could I actually do with my physique? So I think that's really what incentivized me to, to really, you know, and I was always flexing as a kid. I think everyone always admires like superhero type looks and my brothers aren't big. My dad never was really favorable. Hey, you know, you should go work out or, you know, some, some parents bring their kids to, to come see me now. Like I remember when Nick Walker's parents used to bring him to come see me and they were really kind of pushing for it, right? And uh, I just had to learn on my own to kind of do it. Like you said, bro, like that work ethic, you can't. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I used to tell the story, man. I literally would, would pray for each day to be over the days I would go to work because I'd work for 16, 17 hours a day. And I'd be like, man, I was missing out on, I thought, on so much stuff that the other kids were, were all doing. I just realized I, I, I have flat tires on my, <laughs> my dolly. So... I thought I was missing stuff, but I didn't realize that that was setting me up for all this, which I'm so thankful for, dude, because, like, I think everything's easy now compared to doing concrete. My brothers are still doing it. They say they're going to retire in the next couple years, but I'll believe it when I see it. They definitely don't do it for the money, that's for sure. Because they're so frugal with what they do and they have real estate and they're super successful. It's kind of funny how people measure success where sometimes they look at all the material things people have for success when some people just have like a really comfortable lifestyle and they can spread the love and, you know, let those people around it enjoy it. Right. Kind of just one of those, like, everybody's running their own race. Sort of thing. Yeah, I think, like, my dad's whole goal, like, we had seven kids, right? He had seven children, and that's all he cared about was how his kids lived, like, the comfort for them. And I think that's what really was his values. Yeah. Matt left these here, of course, so I should yell at him. Anyone wants a dirty swell monkey bag, I'm, I'm going to offer that to someone on YouTube. Jay Cutler's personal dirty swell monkey bag, I'll sign it. How many floors has it been dragged across? Yeah, that's it, you're right. <laughs> and you weren't even around then, so you know. Give me a... Give me, I want this in YouTube, and I'll, I'll pick someone to send Jay Cutler's dirty bag to. That's an extra right there. Yeah, that's a bunch of straps. Large black tank top. Red Cutler large shirt.
All the way to Denmark, bro. Did you go pick this up? Yeah. So, J Mac, this is the cake, bro. Let's check it out. He took off the weights. But... Oh, you took the weights yeah. off? How come? Been sitting or is it okay? No, they just made it actually. It's fresh. What did it say? Yeah, you didn't even open the box. I did, I did. I no, just, look, I said it was those were letters. Oh, what did it say? Let's see. Oh, it says B Day. It said oh, from Noi and yeah. from Noi and Scruffy and then uh Matt. Alright, so we are this is kind of nice about having uh, samples. Take a little bit of Prevail, my favorite flavor, which is the sour. Sour candy. You know what today is? Today is what workout today is? What are we getting? Today is back training. Didn't we just do back or? When was the last time we did back? We're gonna go to Fit Club. I tried to get into EOS, but they won't return my messages. No, they, let me see if they even responded. He had never replied. I guess, uh, I guess I have to be uh, put on the back burner. You know what I didn't do, though? Oh, you know what? I'm going to have a shake for the next meal. I didn't spend on sending all day. I brought two bananas. So my next meal, do you see the bananas over there? That's going to be meal two. So I'm going back to my roots right now. That would be meal three. I'm going to have, I'm going to have two and a half scoops of protein, which would put me at about 70 grams of protein. And two bananas after I train. Mmm. Unless the lovely one wants to grab an early lunch. So my ideal, this is what I'm trying to do. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to incentivize Angie to come to the office more. What do you think, Angie? I'm trying to get her to come to the office more because she, her office is our, is our theater, our home office, or our, bre our breakfast bar. There's three stations that Angie has that works out of. And I would honestly say our, our home theater is probably the main workstation because she has like a, a portable work desk. And she rolls this thing around and it has all the... And the reason why I have that is because I'm doing affiliates. Those are a lot. She's doing affiliates, so she's doing a lot. But... I feel like our, our home theater is our sanctuary in our house. If Everyone has their spot, right? If, whether it's the bedroom or... I mean, the kitchen, they say, is the biggest hangout spot. So when I built my house, I knew that we would all kind of gather in the kitchen. That's why my kitchen, if you notice, it's all open and so large, right? And I eat all my meals sitting at my bar. I rarely use my living dining area what where do you think how many times a year you think we use it once twice we'll use it like three or three. so for christmas this year angie's family's coming so i believe that we will probably utilize that space right yeah. 
even though there'll be a lot of people, I don't think we can even fit that many people at that table. Yeah, so our main station is is the kitchen. So that's why I knew like we have all the woof appliances and the, all the big the burners and the, the we have four ovens and like two dishwashers. Like industrial grade, like high quality. Yeah. So when I did that, I kind of knew my life was revolved around food and cooking. Even though I feel like I don't, cook, you know, having a meal prep company and and uh and only eating the same thing like i could use the same fry pan i don't know how you are at your house but oh, everybody's got their favorite pan. like angie moved in and all these pots and pans came and i'm looking in my cabinet sometimes like why do we have yeah. all this stuff one frying pan, one pot, <coughs> one... she said one frying pan one pot what I just want to head to Fit Club. What's nice about being me? You see this? Tell me what's nice about being me. I just say, you know what? I need a pair of those straps. I'm just going to take them. Just ready to go. The Fit for 50 is still on underway right now. And today was a day where, you know, normally I don't come to the office till later. I try to take care of business at home, and then I try to get my training in, but. Since we're coming to the tail end and the priority is not only training, it's time to get back to more a little business. And like I said, I said this on like one of my jaywalking videos or somewhere. I don't know if I said it on you, but I plan to do between more between 50 and 60 than I've done in 50 years. I'm motivated. Everyone says I'm crazy, by the way. I know, but I want to I want to do more in the next 10 years than I've ever done in my life. And that could happen in two years. It could happen in a year. I mean, I have so many things that are in the works of, you know, building business and leaving a legacy and inspiring. And, you know, my job now is more focused on inspiring and doing things to put opportunity for other people and and help the industry rise up. That's what I want to do, so that's where I'm at. My head's at and I feel great. I feel motivated. I feel I feel like I uh, I can do it all. I feel like I gotta have a harder workout this week because last week wasn't wasn't that intense. So let me just explain something, guys. So I always like to start the workout with a pulling movement. So where I used to always talk about the reverse grip pull down, which I did on a on a pulley machine. I believe this really pulls the lats and gets everything firing. So I'm gonna focus on three working sets now. Normally I pyramid the weight up, but I'm not going crazy heavy, just get working on contraction. So I'm gonna still focus on at least 10 reps and uh, get that pull going. I actually like this machine a lot.
All right, so you guys that want to try something different. So Andy's running this newbie here at Fit Club. So if you guys are coming to Vegas, make sure they contact you, right? Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Good old new fit, newbie. So we'll put his contact on there. So if you guys are dealing with maybe injuries or you guys want to try something to fatigue a muscle a little more, this machine's really good. You've heard a lot of the pros talk about the success they've had using it. I mean, your clientele is just never, I mean, you love it, right? You know what they say, J-Mac, safety first.
Yeah, so it's kind of funny how I know people judge their workouts by strength. I judge by how my body reacts as far as a pump and muscle fatigue. And like right now, I'm starting to feel a pretty good pump. So sometimes I do this single arm, but today I'm kind of feeling this movement. So I'm going to do a double arm. But pay attention to where I... So I'm going to grip these dead center guys. So you see where I'm wrapping? And they use wraps in every set. I know some people question that, but even the lighter weight. But look where I'm going to grip this dead center. And I'm going to keep constant tension on the lats. Okay, I'm going to focus on 10 reps. <laughs> One of the exercises I said I'd never do again when I quit was a T-bar row. Because they're hard. I, I bet no one's doing this in a uh, lifetime. They don't probably don't even have a T-bar row there. Yeah. I was just thinking, they had one with a pad over there and I'm like, should I do the one with the pad? And I'm like, nah. So a little, little not too wide a grip, a medium grip here.
All right, so you notice. So this to this. Throw a close up of these handles because no one sees these. Different grip, guys. So I'm going to wrap this. I'm going to put it two fingers through. So this is great because it allows me to kind of fingers even when you grab a barbell or a dumbbell finger position makes a huge difference in contracting the lats All right, last set here. All right, so I know a lot of people do these with put weights and bands and everything else. The truth is, is I never did it with uh, with any weights. I, I can't say I never did. I do dumbbells, but I don't know if it's necessary. Just really trying to tighten up, you know, my lower lats. Really engage the lower lats. That what good? Is, what this exercise is good for is it puts that mind to muscle engagement thing that we all need when we train. I always talk about that mind to muscle connection, how important it is. So because I just worked my lats, you know, my backside, I'm gonna do some ab work, some core work. So I'm gonna do a couple exercises, stretch the ab wall. And, uh, you know, I try to do abs every other day right now. My lower back has zero pain, guys, zero, zero, zero. And yes, I still deadlift today, I didn't, but I'm going to do a couple crunches and then I'm going to do some sort of a rope or maybe some, uh, some leg raises.
All right, so pay attention. So what I'm doing now is I want to create a pull to my abs. So I'm hooking my heels to the end of this bench. And when I come back, it's going to stretch my abs this way and I contract, right? So that's the ideal thing is, is to pull the body and contract, pull the body and contract. That's going to be best to develop the abs. So I'm not really counting repetitions, although I'm trying to do like 15. I don't know how many I did, but 15, 20. But you notice, so watch the hook of the heels here, which is going to allow me to have that tension to be able to pull the ab wall, okay? And stretch the abs. So just check out the heels. chiropractors are going to love me with that one because this is also going to help take pressure off your lower back. They're going to say don't crease the Jordans bro. I'm doing something for YouTube now. I'm pulling out. I'm pulling out all the old J's. Cause I, hey bro, everyone's been missing the Jordans. Everyone, everyone thinks I'm Atomics only, but just because I have my own signature shoe doesn't mean I don't have every single pair of Jordan ever, ever made. That's a challenge, though. That's a challenge to YouTube. Is uh, who, who can challenge me on a shoe collection? I just bought some more Jays. My guy sends it to me. I'm like, why not? Okay, yeah, I'll do it. He just sent you a picture? Yeah, I'm like, all right. 150 bucks, okay, I'll do it. I think I think it was good. I think it was uh, like I told you. So I did back on. I did back on Friday. So today is what's today Wednesday. Yeah. So it's just about right. I think I'm actually due. I was due for legs. I think, but I had a little hamstring strain. So I'm trying to think if I'll get legs in or if I'm going to skip this week. Leg train. Everyone always wants to skip leg training. Yeah, me included. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you're taller. It's always harder for the guys to train legs that are taller. But I'm, uh, I felt good. I mean, we did quite a few exercises, the pull down, um, you know, the hammer row. We did the T-bar row, the pullover machine, seated cable row, did some ab training in there. You know, all in all, like every workout is all about just functionality and making sure I'm feeling the movements. It's not about putting on mass because right now, you know, I'm not in a calorie deficit whatsoever. I am doing a bit more cardio than probably I'll continue to do. 
but I don't know. I seem to be in a pretty good groove right now. So, you know, if I can get up and do an hour in the morning and it's suitable in my routine, the only days I have trouble is when I have conference calls like super early in the morning and I miss getting up and don't set my alarm to get up a little earlier because I kind of let my body tell me when I'm going to get up. So today I got up at eight o'clock, which is late for me. Yesterday I got up at six. So normally I get up and have my water and you know, get my mind going a little bit, get into my emails. But for today, today I just got right up and I had to take care of a couple things since I was at the office so late last night and I head out of town tomorrow. So it's just, you know, a lot on my mind. So that's why the workout so for me is really good. I, I mentioned this morning when I did cardio is I'm putting the phone away for the training and the cardio sessions. And that's just showed with this, you know, I mean, although the camera was there, I didn't, I don't carry a phone. I left it at the desk. Do you ever do your cardio like during your conference calls? Uh, sometimes, sometimes, but like I said, I want to dedicate the meditation time. So people talk about like the silence, how it's necessary to for brain function, and you need a shut off. And I think when I'm doing the the workouts, and I'm on conference calls, or I'm on calls, or I'm thinking about things, it doesn't give me that ease. And that's why I started training in the first place was ease my mind and I think I need that and that's why why not give myself two hours two and a half hours three hours a day of of pure meditation where my mind shuts off I mean that's what made me fall in love with the training in the first place was that time I spent between eight to ten at night when I was back in Worcester Massachusetts in the early 90s was a shut off time for me like I didn't think about the stresses of being 18 and torn between a family business and college and what I was going to do the rest of my life because I feel at 18 you're expected to know okay what is your career going to be I mean at least where I came from people need to choose careers early because it's kind of taught on the family to you know have an idea of like okay where are you heading in your life and I don't feel that a lot of people can make that decision because you know a lot of people are moving out of their comfort zone which is their home with their families and you know they go off to college and you know you go through a lot of transitional life experiences and I think that you know people should travel people should get you know see different cultures I mean ideally if I can give anyone solid advice and someone coming from someone that hated to step out of their comfort zone I would tell people to travel and you know at the younger age you know go to different cities or even if you have the opportunity to go to different countries experience the different cultures because you know that is what life experience is all about and I can tell you that even into my 30s and 40s traveling the world it's opened my eyes to so many more things and it made me realize not only how special my life is here and how great it is to be in a routine and but it's also made me realize like there's just so much more opportunity in the, in the the road is is endless pretty much the capabilities of what a person can do and achieve is there's nothing there's no ceiling to that so i think that you know we meet people that influence us in certain ways and those people can only influence us no one's going to do get in your mind and create opportunity for you they might give you some some mindset factors or the opportunity you know they might give you like a job or they might you know use your knowledge and collaborate with with them but no one's going to get up every day inside your body and force you to think and to make action so I think that experience is super important I don't think you should have any limitations and uh, you know this all comes back full circle to why I continue to work out post retirement why I love it so much I'm going to go back and just bury my head into the office stuff. Think, thankfully, Angie's there today, which alleviates some of this, this stress that I might have. You know, I'm going to get back into business a little bit, and then tomorrow I fly, so. Wow. You already ate, huh? I ate when you left. Boy, those chips are good, man. It's been a minute since I had... Since I had some chips. It's the big flaky salt they put on it. It's so Ooh. good. They are salty though, huh? Yeah, those are cold. Those are good.
Best protein in the world, guys. Go to jcutler.com and use code CUTLER. Angie. Save yourself 20%. Oh, yeah, Angie, too. See if anyone uses it. See, let's see. Let's challenge and see who wins the, the challenge of who can sell the most. Jay or, I mean, uh, Cutler or... I think mine's 20% though. What's hers? I think 12 or something. I think I get more percent off than you. No. I think so. No. So that's going to wrap it up for our, our Wednesday vlog. <laughs> so if you guys want to comment below on the video, like, subscribe, follow, all of the above. Tell me what you think of the big 50 cake. I want a piece so bad. We are out, guys. Shout out to YouTube. Appreciate you guys. No mercy for you. No worries for you. That Game of Thrones. Go Cersei on you. <laughs>